Hello there, this is Harley from Trubit. I'm a core developer on the Trubit team. So I'm excited to demo the use of the Trubit OS as a backend dependency uh, for building dApps to use computations that uh, may not fit within the Ethereum gas limit. So we're actually going to be using Trubit with just the press of a button. So we have this website, simple website here, where we can generate a script hash of some text using Trubit. Um, so we're going to do hello, well, hello. So here we have to send a MetaMask notification and voila. So we uh, generated a hash using just JavaScript right here. So this is what we're going to expecting to come back from Trubit. And we can see that Trubit OS, the solver, has actually seen the task come in and has already like ran the task and submitted the solution. So because this is running on Ganache, we have to manually you know skip the blocks because there is a challenge uh, and you know, reveal period, so ended the challenge period, and then because the, you know, I'm not, no one's running a verifier, uh, it was never challenged, and because it was right, so even if someone was running a verifier, it wouldn't have challenged anyways, so the task goes on, um, and we see that the task is finalized, and then voila, the task, uh, the data comes back onto screen. So now I'll take the time to kind of break down how this worked and why this is uh, significant. So the reason being why you know generating the script hash from a Trubit uh, system is like significant for people is because uh, if you want a smart contract to be you know just checking a hash, well usually you just rehash the data and then you can you know have it work. That's you use for um, you know like SHA three and stuff like that. But uh, if it's S script, you can't do that because S script is meant to be computationally heavy. It's used for proof of work. Uh, specifically for Dogecoin, that's why Trubit's interested. Uh, and you will run into the gas limit. So even if you have like a ton of money, you can't do that. Whereas Trubit, you know, runs the computation off chain, and we have a whole system about you know making that computation secure. Um, and then what's great is that you're able to get that data back on chain, and then a smart contract can use it. And right here, we're just displaying it on this website, but you know you could use that for other types of DApps. So uh, I'll take the time to. Um, open up some of the code. So here is the how you write a Trubit task. So right now you can um, compile C++, C, or Rust into WebAssembly. So here's our C++ program that is generating the escrow patch um, of some data. So the first significant line of code is this uh, file stream or input stream. And it has a specific name, input.data. And when we look at the contract, we'll see that why this name is more significant. But this normal WebAssembly, if you're familiar with WebAssembly, doesn't really enable you to do that, but it, obviously you want to be able to read in the file system if you're running this code on a computer. And so Trubit is actually, uh, when you generate the task, we're actually injecting some of these file system calls in for you. So that's why, um, and we'll have documentation about how to do that using the Trubit tool chain. So here we're using the data, blah, 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 formatting it, and then we generate the hash right here, skip some stuff, and then we write out the file. We write it out, and then that file, you know, has the hash, and we can use that. And it later gets uploaded uh, to the Trubit file system. So that's that. Um, simple enough, right? C++, but it's it's no problem. So the reason why it was so easy to use Trubit there as like a client is because we have this kind of contract already in place that has the submit data function, and so the data is a, some bytes. So that was the hello world. We do some formatting, blah, blah, blah. And then here we're using the Trubit file system. So we're registering our input data in there. We're making this bundle. And that's where it like, knows where to find the data later um, after the task has been completed. And then we submit the task right here. So this is create task with params. So we have the initial hash of uh, all of the files and everything. And we have some extra parameters here because we have some customization for the script task. And then uh, we want to make sure we know where the output data is. So that you have to make sure these like names are the same um, whenever you're submitting it to the contract and in your uh, actual C++ code for that you're writing the task in. So as long as you follow those conventions, you're fine. Then uh, we're returning the, the hash after that. So boom, easy. Um, the another thing to keep in mind is that when this contract is deployed, it has the address for the code, so where it's stored in IPFS. 
and um, initial hash. So you need that so for different security purposes of Truebit, so you'll need to generate that before you submit are able to submit the task. Um, and usually once you write your Truebit task, you just need to upload it once, and so you can just save it and then reuse it. So every time submit data um, happens, it, it's actually just reusing these parameters. So that's it's pretty easy once you get it set up. And so that's this function is what enabled us to do that press a button and use MetaMask and then sends it and we get the data back. So that's all we had to do. Um, so yeah, that's how to interface with Truebit and using Truebit OS as the um, backend dependency. So let me break down some of these windows really quick. So just to make sure you need IPFS running and you need Ganache running or you know some type of Ethereum node. And then you can just uh, simply get started with Truebit OS like that. And then build some awesome dApps. So t thanks for taking the time to watch. Uh, hope you guys like it and are interested in the project.